March 29th, the servant of God, Leo Heinrichs, martyr, first order. Father Leo Heinrichs was born in the little village of Ostrich in Germany's famed Rhineland, not far from Cologne on the Feast of the Assumption of Our Lady in 1867. He was baptized on the day of his birth and received the name of Joseph. He was well trained in the love and fear of God and was a model of piety, edifying all with whom he came in contact. No one was astonished to learn of his desire to become a priest. Joseph was just beginning his classical studies when Bismarck launched the Kulterkampf. So the boy was sent to Holland to finish his preliminary studies under the Redemptorist Fathers. But yielding to his desire to follow in the footsteps of the Pavarello of Assisi, Joseph applied for admission among the Franciscan Fathers. So it happened that at the age of 19, he was a member of the band of Franciscan exiles who set out for Patterson, New Jersey. On December 4th, 1886, Joseph was received into the Franciscan order. And on the feast of the Immaculate Conception, 1890, he pronounced his solemn vows. During the formative years of his religious life, it was his good fortune to have excellent masters of the spiritual life. He gave himself wholeheartedly to his holy vocation, forming solid habits of piety that remained with him throughout life. His ordination to the priesthood took place on July 26, 1891, in the Friary Church at Patterson. The first years of his ministry, ministry were devoted chiefly to parish work in New Jersey. In 1907, Father Leo was transferred to Denver, Colorado, to the pastorate of St. Elizabeth's. Little did he or anyone else think that Providence had destined him to spend but five brief months there, that this would be the scene of his death, and that death martyrdom. It was on Sunday morning, February 23, 1908. Father Leo had volunteered to offer the six o'clock mass in place of one of his sick confreres. The altar bell sounded for the Domine non sum dignus, Quietly and devoutly, the communicants approached the holy table. One sinister figure slouched from a pew and joined the others at the altar rail. No sooner was the sacred host placed upon his tongue than he spat it forth, and at the same time firing a pistol concealed beneath his coat. Father Leo dropped to the floor with a bullet in his heart. As he fell, he seemed to be concerned only for his Eucharistic Lord. With reverent precision, he tried to replace the sacred particles which had fallen from the overturned ciborium. Amid the panic which ensued in church, two priests from the friary reached the scene. And while one picked up the consecrated hosts, the other administered the last rites of the church. A moment later, on the sanctuary floor, at the foot of Mary's altar, Father Leo breathed his last. Remarkable coincidence. Just a few days before, in addressing the young lady's sodality, Father Leo admonished them always to be prepared for the final summons. He then spoke the strangely prophetic words, Oh, how sweet it is to die at the feet of Mary. When Father Leo's remains were prepared for burial, the extent of his sanctity became known. Chains of link steel were found wrapped around his waist and upper arms. To every link was attached a hook, sharpened to a needle's point, adjusted in such fashion that every movement of the priest caused the hooks to pierce his flesh. The deep calluses furrowed in his flesh indicated that these instruments of penance had been worn for many years. None of his associates knew that Father Leo practiced this form of corporal mortification. Nearly four years after his death, the remains were transferred to a new plot in the cemetery. When the body was exhumed, not the slightest sign of decomposition was in evidence. 
although the casket had decayed, as well as the brown habit in which the body was clothed. The condition of the body was in remarkable contrast to those buried considerably later and was a matter of comment because it is generally supposed that the best embalming done at the time could not last longer than 18 months. Through the intercession of Father Leo, also a number of cures, both in the physical and spiritual order, have occurred. How sweet it is to die at the feet of Mary. Father Leo had the most filial devotion towards the Immaculate Mother of God. He always considered himself singularly blessed that his birth and baptism occurred on the feast of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin. The Immaculate Mother surely heard him exclaim, How sweet it is to die at the feet of Mary! And she rewarded her son for the tender affection he bore her by granting him the privilege of breathing forth his soul before her altar. What can we say of our devotion to Mary? Is it such that she might also incline to give us some rare privilege in the hour of our death? Holy Mother Church encourages us to ask the Mother of God to aid us not only now while we are struggling in this veil of tears, but especially when life's course is run. She places on our lips the words, Holy Mary, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. How often have our lips repeated these words? But did we always think of what we were saying? And did we mean it? Or could the words of the evangelist be applied to us? This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Matthew 15:8. If we find that we are guilty, we cannot expect Mary to intercede for us in that awful moment. But if we have used this prayer to advantage, we are fortunate, for death is the moment of greatest concern in our lives. Satan knows this and is prepared to put us to a final test. But if Mary is with us in that hour, we have reason to hope that she will then again crush the serpent's head and lead us safely to the eternal shores. <clears throat> Saint Francis, too, died at Mary's feet. It was at Saint Mary of the Angels that his soul winged its flight to heaven. For him, there was no dearer spot on earth than this sanctuary, and many a night he spent there in prayer. He was an affectionate son, and Mary kept him close to her as he passed from time to eternity. We are children of St. Francis, brothers and sisters of Father Leo. Let us imitate them both in their loyalty to the Mother of Mercy while we are in this valley of tears, so that she may not fail us in the end, and after this our exile may show us the blessed fruit of her womb. Prayer of the Church. O God, who didst will that thy divine Son should become man upon the annunciation of the angel, grant us who humbly beseech thee that we who acknowledge her to be truly the Mother of God may obtain assistance from thee through her intercession through the same Christ our Lord. Amen.